Hey guys, today I'm going to show you some nifty little things about the GIMP interface that you might not have noticed, but that just may make your GIMPing life a little bit easier. And I'm going to start with making the toolbox and the layers, channels and paths disappear. And what you need to do is make sure that your image window is active and then press tab on your keyboard and then they're gone and press tab again and they're back again. And if you want just your toolbox or just your layers, channels and paths and undo to be visible, then first of all, make them invisible and then go to, where is it? Windows and either click toolbox or press control B or click layers, channels, paths undo. So if I click on layers, channels, paths undo, then my layer dialog will be back and for my toolbox, I need to click on this and then my toolbox will be back. So this way you can either work with no layers and toolbox at all. And if you are working on large images, that's very handy or work with both of them or work with one of them, either of them. So um, that's uh, on how to make the toolbox and layers disappear and appear again in GIMP while you're working. And the next thing I'm going to show you is this little button here and when it isn't ticked then normally and it this, this depends a little bit on your preferences but, but for me normally when you resize the window your window will resize and you will have space around it but when you press this button here it will resize the image to the image window to this window and when you resize the window like this it will also make your image bigger and smaller. And if you don't want that to happen, then make sure it's not pressed and then you can have all the space around your image that you want. But if you want to make the image fit the image window, then press this button here. So this is a very nice and handy button that you can easily overlook. And I'm going to make this big again. And um, uh, next thing I'm going to show you is, um, no, I'm not going to show you, is tell you to press 1 on your keyboard and then your image will be 100%. So that's just a very handy little key, a short key, 1 on your keyboard and your image will always be zoomed at 100%. And talking about shortcuts or short keys, there are a few in GIMP that are buried deep in short keys that you may not know about and I thought I mentioned them as well. And it's for the colors. You can click this to change the foreground and background color, but you can also press X on your keyboard. And see what happens if I pre press X on my keyboard. Now if you have, um, then the colors change like this. And now if you have two different colors than black and white, like this and you want them black and white again you can press on this icon here but you can also just press on x on your keyboard no i'm sorry on d on your keyboard x is for changing the foreground and background colors d is for the default colors back so that's very handy as well and for the brushes are some very handy short keys as well and that's when it comes to scaling and normally you would uh, brush and think oh where's my brush here Okay, sorry, here's my brush. And for some reason it won't brush in. Oh, shame on me, I was on the wrong layer. I was on the background layer and you need to be on the top layer <laughs> in order to see what your brush did. So I'm gonna brush and I want it a little bit bigger so I have to scale this up. But you don't know how big your brush is when you are scaling it like this. And for this, fortunately there is a handy short key and that are the bracket keys. And the bracket keys are the ones next to the P. And when you press the left bracket key, your brush will be smaller. And when you press the right bracket key, your brush will grow bigger. And I'm not sure if you can see it here, but here's my brush. And now when I brush, it's much, much bigger. And to make it smaller again, press the left bracket key. And to go back to one, press the key next to it. At least it's next to it for me on my keyboard. It's the backslash key. And look what happens in the toolbox here. When I press the backslash key, it goes back to scale of one. So that's a very nice short keys to remember when you're using brushes. 
And the next thing I'm going to show you is something about the interface again, and it's tear off menus. And what are tear off menus? Well, you can get them in two ways. And the first way is opening the menu with this little icon here. And it does exactly the same as right clicking on the image anywhere, and then you've got the menu as well. And this is the same menu as above here, only it's sort of uh, vertical instead of horizontal. And um, uh, I don't know if you remember my 100 subscribers thank you video. Uh, I used tear off menus in that one. And if you haven't noticed, maybe you need to take, or maybe, or sorry, you can take a look at them if you want to, of course. And I used it for logos. I went to file, create logos. And then I clicked on this line here. And then you've got a tear off menu. And when you look at the video, you can see how I use it. And another way for another uh, great way for tear off menus is for, say, filters. I'm going to right click again and go to filters. Where is it? Filters. And say you want to try out all the artistic filters. Then just click on the tear off on the artistic filters here. And there's your menu, and then you can easily see what all the filters do without having to go through all the menus like this. I took filters, where is artistic, and then, you know, it just saves you a lot of time. So let's stare off menus, and I think it's a really cool feature in GIMP. And that's just nice if you're not a Photoshop user, then you've got tear off menus, and in Photoshop, you don't. So that's really nice. And the last thing I'm going to show you about the GIMP interface is how to pan in GIMP. Because there isn't a hand um, tool in here and people don't so often don't know how to pan in GIMP. And uh, so I thought I'd show you how to pan in GIMP. And for this I need to open a other image and I will be right back. So I've opened this larger image and I'm going to pan around in it. And one of the easy ways to pan around in an image is just pressing on your scroll wheel and then hold your scroll wheel down and then you can pan around in your image. And another way you can do it is just pressing your um, space bar and then not pressing any keys on your mouse. Just move your mouse around and you can pan around in your image. And then let go of your space bar and you have panned around and again spacebar and not pressing any keys on your mouse or just pressing the scroll wheel and holding it down and then pan around and this little button here that you pan around as well by just clicking on it and uh, dragging around in this little image and you can see what part of the image you are panning in so if you've got a really large image this will make you show where you are and uh, that's a very handy feature. And I hope you can see it with the yellow thingy over the mouse button. That the recording um, um, software does. So I'm going to hold it here. So you can see it. So that's panning in GIMP. And I think that was it for this video. Because it's getting really long. And I hope these tips were helpful. And... If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, then maybe you'd like to watch my other videos as well and subscribe. And thank you for watching!